for this magnificent Irish team. The back-to-back Grand Slam dream is over, but they are still an amazing rugby team. They've achieved so much and they've got so much still to achieve. So that's going to be their big challenge to get back on the bike this coming Saturday against Scotland. Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to our Six Nations series. I'm going to be with you throughout the championship and beyond. So hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. And today I'm going to be looking at Ireland and the team that I think might be picked to try and win the championship against Scotland this coming Saturday in Dublin. OK, just looking at how they played against England, obviously lost the game and were dominated in big parts in terms of territory and possession. But despite that, they were really efficient in terms of getting points when they had their chances. And that's a big plus for this Irish side. Ahead at half time, when they were behind on most of the other statistics and created two fantastic tries with limited possession in the second half as well. So, I mean, the Grand Slam's gone, that's done, but there's a silver lining in what was a, a substandard Ireland performance for sure. Alco and myself went into it in great detail. I'll link it up there for you. Go and check that one out if you haven't seen it already. We give a really balanced view uh, over both teams' performance in that game. Okay, some squad updates. Uh, there were a couple of HIAs, a couple of concussions. Nash, very early on, got whacked by Freeman. Didn't see it coming, I don't think, really, or, or the very last minute anyway. It looked like maybe a, a hip to the head or neck area. It looked quite a nasty one. I haven't heard anything, but I suspect that there's very little chance he'll be available this coming weekend. Frawley also went off and failed a HIA. Now, I didn't see this one happen during the game, and I'm not sure. It didn't seem like a, a bad one. Like, I think he walked off, all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's potential that he'll be available. Again, he's going to have to follow all the protocols, pass all of those. I think it's three stages, three passes that they have to get in Able to be available to play this coming weekend. So we'll see about him. I'm going to assume he's available, though. I think there's every chance that he will be. In terms of everybody else, I think everybody else came through the game fine. A uh, few batters and bruised, you know. Um, Porter's ear, apart from many other things, definitely looked like it had a few whacks. Um, OK, but let's get into it. So the big thing for this Ireland team, I think, and strategically, I think this is how Andy Farrell will be thinking about it, is that these guys were the best players last week. They're still going to be the best players this week. And knowing what competitive animals they are, they're going to want an opportunity to put things right and get a performance on the pitch that they feel is really reflect them. So I don't expect to see many changes at all. And based on the post-match press conferences with Farrell and with Peter Omani, who both spoke with great like maturity and uh, realism and the fact that you, you lose in sport sometimes. Of course, everybody wants to try and win every game. And, you know, that ends in titles and championships and grand slams and this kind of thing. But it can't happen. Nobody wins every game. So I think I spoke with great maturity and I think that bodes well for them getting a, a good performance out this coming weekend. OK, let's get into the forwards. And I am going to back... I'm going to back the same guys, you know. Uh, as I said, I think there were a lot of competitive performances in here. And in lots of ways, England took the game away from Ireland. Ireland pushed England at scrum time. I think Ireland had the edge at the scrum. Uh, didn't always get the reward, I didn't think, necessarily. I think Ireland stopped England getting the possession they wanted at line-out time. Uh, England were trying to throw to the tail early doors. They lost one. Ireland disrupted another. And then England changed and went to a very safe options towards the front mostly which is a success as far as i'm concerned for the island line out for the for the uh, vast majority of scenarios that they were in so i think this forward pack is very compact combative they didn't get into their flow attack wise so you didn't see all the carrying that you used to and the handling skills but i think they defended pretty well as well you know england got did get some good go forward but that was from excellent play from England, not necessarily because it was particularly poor defence from Ireland. So these eight keep their spots and I'm sure they will be absolutely raging to go in Dublin this coming weekend. On to the backs. 
And again, actually, I thought there were a lot of good performances, really. I thought I thought Aki played was outstanding, probably Ireland's best back. With the reshuffles that went on, I thought Keenan did a great job on the right wing when he went there, won some balls. I thought Gibson Park, with his pass for Lowe's second try, did some brilliant things in the backfield, safe under the high ball as well, which I thought was potentially something that England could have gone after him on. Crowley was maybe a little bit quiet, but again, it's difficult to judge when England was so dominant in terms of territory and possession. James Lowe with his two tries, you know, absolutely excellent finishing. I mean, they were both kind of run-ins, really, but he did finish them both really well. Um, as you can see, Nash is out. I am going to go with Ring Rose to come back into the side and play on the wing, which he has done a number of times for Ireland previously. World-class operator, world-class player, getting back in the team, getting back playing. This is the opportunity he needs. And I think... You know, it, I mean, it potentially makes Ireland stronger than last week in some ways. Onto the bench. And again, I don't see any reason to change anything. They're going to be fizzing. They're going to be desperate to get out there and prove that last week was a blip and to get back to their imperious best. I thought maybe a question mark, maybe Murray. Uh, might drop out of the side. There's a lot of criticism about how he managed the sort of the end of the game there. I'm not convinced all that criticism is valid. And certainly I'm not sure it's all due on his shoulders in any case. I'm sure a lot of that was team decisions. You know, I didn't see on that last ruck that people are talking about, I didn't see a pot of forwards desperately calling for the ball, saying, give it to us, we'll hit it up. I think that was a team decision. So for the criticism that he's received personally, I don't think that's in any way fair. Uh, and still a very classy operator and somebody that can be trusted with the end of the game, I think. Some of these forwards came on and were, and were sort of industrious best. I thought Beelan was excellent when he came on. I'm a big fan of his. Henderson rolling back the years a little bit and showing that he's still at his industrious best. We didn't see a flying break from Ryan Baird this weekend, but then it wasn't that kind of game. Ireland had to really roll their sleeves up and get stuck in and fight for every inch. Um, and just came up short. It's a real tight game. OK, what I want to see from them this weekend, I want to see them just go back to what they do best. I want to see them get flow, get attacking rhythm, get through their phases. And if they do that and they can get the possession and territory, which they fail to get at Twickenham, then I think they'll cause Scotland a whole heap of problems. They just need to be, as I said about the press conferences, they just need to be mature in the head. And I think this team are. I think they're excellent and they've still got a whole lot more to achieve. So that is what I think. I, that's what I think this Ireland team will be. Do you think this is what Farrell is going to pick? Do you think maybe he wants to try and freshen some stuff up? Maybe there's some bruised bodies or egos or something and he feels like something needs to change? Let me know in the comments down below and I will join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it and that's good for everybody. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.